Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Let's put them down. Sense of the week. All right. So these are guys that we don't really like. We don't like their matchups. We know you have decisions to make as fantasy owners. You have these guys on your team. Yeah, that's, that's the basis of this. Yeah, they're worth owning. We're not saying drop any of these guys. We're saying watch sit out. Them. Watch maybe, out. Maybe sit them if you. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it off. You do it. All right, my quarterback sit of the week uh, is the opposite of staying in the flames. It is staying in the mud with Andy Dalton. And I'm sorry, Andy Dalton has Arizona in Arizona, another primetime game for Andy Dalton, which he's not exactly known for performing in. I, I don't want to disparage the man too much because it wasn't just on him on Monday Night Football. There were drops, there were fumbles, there were problems all throughout. But Andy Dalton had a bad game, and Arizona's not going to help them out at all. They haven't given up 30 fantasy points to any quarterback in the entire season. They have a ball-hawking secondary, and you've got a team that will be at home in prime time, a very good defense. So I think Andy Dalton... I've heard from people, right, that have Drew Brees and Andy Dalton. Uh, obviously, Brees is not playing this week, so you're stuck. But yeah. rest, of <laughs> season, rest of season questions, there's a lot of those things. And I just don't like the schedule for Dalton compared to Brees, and I don't like Dalton this week. Yeah, that prime time. I mean, he buckled on prime time. He's kind of known to do that. He's got the Sunday night again. I like it. Yeah, I'd play somebody else. All right, my quarterback sit of the week is actually the opposite of your opposite of staying in the flames. It <laughs> oh, is great. Yeah, it is. A guy who has been on fire is a guy who we would say maybe stay in the flames. I cannot believe this is your pick. I know. I know. It's my pick. I am in shock. You are in shock. I am not because I picked it. It is Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler has been on fire. We normally recommend when they are this hot to stay in the flames, which is the exact reason I picked him because people might say I need to keep rolling him. And I don't think it's going to happen this week. He plays the Broncos. The Broncos have not been okay. They have been otherworldly against almost every single opponent they have played all year. In terms of quarterback? In terms of quarterback and passing game. Not necessarily the run. The run, they've been middle of the road. But against the passing game, they have shut it down. They shut down Aaron Rodgers. They shut down everybody they played. Andrew Luck. Had a decent game two weeks ago. And then last week, they still were awesome. They didn't give up a whole lot, but they didn't have uh, Aqib Talib, Talib. He'll be back this week off of his suspension. There's no reason that I think the Broncos will do anything other than have a great defense again this week. Uh, that doesn't bode well for Jay Cutler. Right. Hold him. Grab him. He was a waiver wire claim. He's got great playoff schedule. But sit him down this week. All right. So who is your running back that you are staying away from? Well, I hope that most people are already staying away. I don't think I'm breaking any crazy news here, but I, there is no world in which I would want to plug in Jeremy Hill. And this is, you know, Mike, we sent him away, and we could finally have a little bit of realistic talk on the Jeremy Hills. We uh, have to prepare for the kind of uh, intervention that he, <laughs> we're going to have when he gets back. We're going to have to break. We're keeping the news from him about Kristen Michael because we know – he would just he's not going to have fun in the happiest place on earth if his favorite player is cut. Yeah, we we got to we got to keep him in the dark. Jeremy Hill ran for a nice healthy 2 yards a carry last week. Only got 7 carries anyways. It's and a good reason up, to only get 7 carries. Comes up this week against the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona whose run D has been awesome. I don't see any reason to think. I mean, sure, Jeremy Hill could get in the end zone. He's got that, you know, if if AJ Green gets tackled at the one, <laughs> maybe Jeremy Hill will be Okay, but seven of ten weeks, he hasn't even gotten double digits in fantasy. I don't think – I think there's a lot of better options out there to start. Very fair, very fair. My running back sit of the week is James Starts. A lot of reasons for this, but the biggest one has to do with going to Minnesota, who just plain knows how to play defense under Mike Zimmer. They're ninth against fantasy running backs in terms of points given up. There are variables in play with James Starks. Everyone can come out and say James Starks is now the starter, and I that is absolutely correct. Here's what I also know. They have never won a game with him as the starter this season. They have struggled on offense. The offense is having a problem, and you have the variables with Eddie Lacy if he happens to be active this week, and you mix that in with the matchup, and I just don't like James Starks. I, I, lo I love the pick. He was the bona fide full-time starter against the hapless Detroit Lions and he didn't do At hardly home. anything with it. And now Eddie Lacy might be back to eat a little bit into that workload and a great matchup. So 
So yeah, was that the intentional eating of the workload? Because that's <laughs> Eddie Lacy tends yeah, to. Yeah, that's what he does. He eats everything. Yeah, so he was inactive. Like a goat. Oh, <laughs> great, great. That one will stick. All right, I'm gonna give you my wide receiver because it, you're gonna kind of understand the theme <laughs> here because he's uh, it's AJ Green. AJ Green, you've heard you heard me talk about Andy Dalton. I don't like AJ Green shadowed by Patrick Peterson on Sunday Night Football. Uh, I think there are other options for Dalton, and that the offense is going to struggle a little bit. And I just don't like the matchup in general. So I'm, you know, if you have AJ Green, give me a situation there. Give me some other players. Would I start him or sit him over there? Uh, would you? Well, I think one of our one of our first questions: AJ Green or T.Y. Hilton? Uh, I would play Hilton. AJ Green or Alan Hearns? Yeah, that's a tough one. That is a tough one because you have AJ Green and his big playability. But um, right now, I'm going to say Alan Hearns. There you go. That's so that's that, the level of sittage. Yeah. That's a real word. All but right, if, go if ahead. If you've got a Mike Evans or someone like that, you would start him yeah, over yeah, exactly, AJ Green. Exactly. Okay. So my, uh, my sit of the week at wide receiver is a guy that we just told you yesterday to pick up on the waivers, Kamar Aiken. The reason we love Aiken is is he is the number one target. He's going to get 14 targets last exactly. week. Exactly. He's going to get 10 plus targets every single game. The problem here is another one of matchup. First, you have to realize that not everybody is, you know, some guys we talk about being matchup proof. There are certain players that they rise to the occasion and certain players whose talent really takes advantage of the 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 worst opponents on those occasions. Well, Kamar Aiken he was a middle of the pack type of wide receiver. He's not an otherworldly talent. That's why he wasn't in the wide receiver one position. Steve Smith was. He's been thrust in there, and now he's going up against the Rams, who have just been next to the Broncos. They are the next best against the pass. So I'm I'm just not loving his talent against that defense. I know that the uh, Jay Cutler team carved up the Rams last week, but I think that's the aberration. So yeah, okay. So let me put put that into practice here. Would you start? Kamar Aiken, or would you start Jordan Matthews against Tampa? Jordan Matthews, assuming he is healthy and out there. Would you start Kamar Aiken or Marvin Jones against Arizona? I, at that point, I would I would have to go Kamar Aiken. So okay. I'm, I'm not, you know, these aren't sit I'm just over curious. everyone, but right. you know, Kamar Aiken is the number one target. He's got a terrible matchup, but Marvin Jones is probably the number two or three target, and also has a terrible matchup. All right, the tight end I'm staying away from this week, I have less confident in, confidence in, is a guy that is on a lot of rosters with other tight ends, and that's Antonio Gates. I don't think Antonio Gates has a very good week this week. The Kansas City defense is known for stopping the tight end position in fantasy football, and it obviously that translates to real-life ability, and they stop the tight ends. They're in the top six against fantasy tight ends. He doesn't quite look himself right now athletically, and I just think the Kansas City defense as a whole has been – ascending week after week six sacks last week five the week before i understand gates is going to get his targets but i just don't see a big game from him so I, if i had another comparable option to gates if i'm you know obviously you don't get a roll barnage out a lot of people have that situation barnage is on by but if you have a comparable guy i would be sitting gates yeah i hear that the guy that uh, i would be sitting who is normally a starter is martellus bennett uh, you know, the last couple weeks, he's actually been the second tight end on their team. I don't expect that to continue. I don't think Zach Miller is going to continue to have just amazing catch reception for touchdown week after week. But that being said, he's splitting those targets now. Martellus Bennett used to get all of the targets. Now they're they're getting Zach Miller more involved. And once again, you know, the, you see the pairing here as well against that Broncos defense. Broncos have been exceptional against the tight end as well. They've given up very few large games to the tight end. I don't think that Martellus Bennett is going to get it done, and he has a name that you normally start. He's going to hurt a couple of fantasy teams that decide to roll with him instead of flexing in someone better. Well, would you flex in Eric Ebron? Absolutely. Great example. He's on waivers, uh, or at least was. Maybe you picked him up. I would play Eric Ebron over Martellus Bennett. What about Charles Clay against New England? Charles Clay, uh, he, you saw him get used again this last week. He disappeared for a little while, but I would rather have Charles Clay. I'm with you. I'm with you. So those are our sits of the week. And obviously next week while Mike with us, he'll give us his as well. But he's, uh, you know, riding a roller coaster or something right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, can you do that with that beard? Is that legal? Can you get that? Wouldn't that get caught Ooh. somewhere? No, not 
I'd not say woo. Oh. I'm talking about would the beard get caught in some of the peripheral, you know, you're on a they don't, roller coaster. No, Disneyland doesn't discriminate. They don't discriminate <laughs> against beards. Hipsters permitted. All right.